Hello, welcome to the TV Nerdness Podcast. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back for another episode. If you're new, my name is Megan. You can also find me as TV Nerdness on Instagram. And I always sound so southern when I say it in Instagram. Instagram. That sounds worse. Anyways, um, you can find me as TV Nerdness on Instagram or Zevril on Ravelry. You can also find the group for this podcast on Ravelry as TV Nerdnits. I think that's it. <laughs> Just type it in the search and you can find it. There's also a link provided for it um, under the show notes in the description box on YouTube. Um, and yes, you can only find this podcast on YouTube. I... I don't think I've ever done iTunes. <laughs> My husband's kind of anti-Apple. <laughs> He's one of those, <laughs> those PC people that are so anti-Apple. And I just, I just go with whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> Anyways, enough about that. This is a knitting podcast. Um, and also spinning. And just yarn addiction. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, I did actually, and I did talk about this in the last episode, about trying to promote this podcast a little bit more, and I did, I shared it on one of the Facebook groups that I belong to, called Fine Yarn Connoisseurs, and, um, anyways, got a few more viewers, so that's pretty awesome, <laughs> and then maybe the New Year's will stick around and watch some more, maybe not. Yeah, I'm kind of cray cray. Hmm. Anywho, let's get on to the meeting. I do have an FO. Yay. Um, last episode I was in the middle of a heel turn on one of the socks. And I finished them. Um, these are Christmas gift number three. Yeah. Um, also third pair of socks for Christmas gift knitting. Um, these will be going to my mom for Christmas. The yarn is Cascade Heritage Print in the lightning colorway. Um, it is self-striping with a little patterning that's supposed to probably be Fair Isle or something. I'm not really sure. Um, I didn't pay attention to recommended gauge or anything like that on the ball band. I'm sure there is a recommended gauge, but I'll just go with whatever. I'll just go with the flip. <laughs> um, my mom wears size US 10 in women. Kind of, just kind of between 9.5 and, and 10. But um, I cast on, or these were knitted two at a time, two up. Um, 64 stitches around. Uh, fish lips kiss heel and uh, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And oh, the cast on I do for for um, toe up, I believe is called the Turkish cast on. I think, I think that's what it's called. It sounds about right, I guess. I've never really paid attention <laughs> to the text on these. But anyways, so yeah, I'm really happy with them. Um, this is my this is my first time knitting with this particular yarn. Actually, I think it, I think this is my first time was my first time knitting with Cascade. Um. I, it's a very big brand. I know that. It's very popular. Their 220 line is very popular, but I, I don't think I've ever, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've never knitted a Cascade before. So, anyways, um, it, it's, um, oh, what were you? Were you 75? It's either 75 or 80% Superwash Merino, and then I think it's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. 
in the ball, it feels really soft, but knitting up, it's kind of rough feeling from Merino, which was kind of weird, but it softened up quite a bit after washing and blocking. But anyways, here they are. Yay for another Christmas gift completed. And that's my only FO. Yeah, that's my only FO so far. I am almost done with this one, which I will show off now. So let's go into the whips. Okay, uh, last episode I was talking about when I finished my mom's Christmas socks that I was going to move on and knit um, socks for, for my husband for Christmas. And he wanted the blueberry waffle socks pattern which I still never can remember the name of the designer, but it is a free pattern on Ravelry. Very popular pattern. I'm sure you must have heard of it. As you can see, I have got I've gotten a lot of work done since the last episode. Well, um, let's see. I'm trying to remember when I finished my mom's socks. Might have been like a maybe a few days after I recorded the last episode. So, um, these have moved along really fast. I just have, I'm going to knit the leg to match the length of the foot. So, as you can tell, as you can see, I'm about halfway, halfway there. Maybe less than, yeah, maybe a little more than halfway there. So, it won't be that much longer until I'll have these done. So, yay. Anyways, I talked about how my husband wanted thicker, thicker weight uh, socks, and this is, and I was kind of back and forth between what yarn to use. Well, I ultimately decided to use stashed yarn. Um, I can't remember how long I've had this yarn in my stash. It's been well over a year, so yay for using up some stashed yarn. I really need to use it. Um, this is Malabrigo in the sand, sand bank colorway on the Rio's, their Rio space, which is their 100% superwash merino. Um, it's really nice. I really like the very thick. They fit very well. Obviously they're knit two at a time toe up. And Fish Lips Kiss, Fish Lips Kiss Heel once more. Um, the pattern is written for DK weight, and I knitted the pattern for my dad's socks in fingering weight, and I just used my standard sock recipe for that. However, this is the first time I knitted worsted weight socks. Actually, I've only ever knitted fingering weight socks, so. Um, but this is my first time knitting worsted weight socks, and I just, it does go by really fast. <laughs> But I was looking at, I combined like um, the stitch count and stuff for Tin Kin Knits Rye sock pattern, which is which was designed in worsted weight. And anyways, I went off of that. Theirs is cut down. That pattern is cut down. And so is, um, so is the blue, Blueberry Waffle sock pattern. It is also written as cut down. Well, I just, I think I cast on 10 stitches using the Turkish cast on and um, increased, did, did a round to toe increase to 48 stitches total for each sock. So, yeah, 48 stitches as opposed to 72 stitches for sock weight goes a lot faster, goes by a lot faster, especially with this pattern since there's a lot of purling. So it's been nice. So I should have I should definitely have these finished next time I record. So I will have another Christmas gift done. And this is this is gift number four. So um oh and I'm knitting these on size US five needles which is a 3.75 millimeter and these are my child view child view needles fixed circulars um 40 inch anywho yeah it's going by pretty pretty fast 
Um, the only thing that I don't really like about knitting worsted weight socks so far is that it just seems to be a little rougher on my hands. Um, I don't know, I guess maybe because of the, the weight, the yarn weight combined with that small and needles. Which, you know, I've done that before, so that really shouldn't have mattered. But, I don't know, it just seemed like my hands just seem to get tired a lot quicker knitting on these as opposed to doing sock knitting. You know, with the right, with standard sock weight yarn and US1 needles. So, I don't know. Anyways, I, the, these socks are being housed in my new project bag, which I'm going to go ahead and show off. It's also kind of sort of stash enhancement since I seem to be collecting project bags. <laughs> um, this, check this, check this beauty out. I love it. Oh, this is from Silver, the Silver Shed USA, which you can find her shop on Etsy. And as you no, I, and if you're a new viewer, I love the Silver Shed USA. I happen to have quite a few of her project bags. <laughs> um, try to remember, I, I think I might have five, five plus. It seems like I have more than five. But anyways, yes, I'm a big fan of her bags. They're very, very, very good quality. Excellent stitching. And just, and also, if you are a new viewer, and if you're a returning viewer, you are very well aware <laughs> that I crush hard on Al from Home Improvement. If you are old enough <laughs> to remember that particular sitcom, um, Al Borland, who always wore flannel. So, yeah. I love it. <laughs> also have jamberry wraps that are in the same pattern. Um, my friend texted me the other day. Is he, yeah, it was. It was the other day. No, it was last week. And um, my husband and I just went to Academy to get him some new uh, boots. And anyways, of course, you know, when we go to Academy, my husband was like, no, this is my story. You don't go looking around and stuff. But, you know, for the most part, I'm like, whatever, I don't really care. But, um, anyways, uh, she texted me, I think it was like one or two days after we went to the academy, she texted me a picture. They have these shoes that are in this print, the flannel, the plaid flannel print. And I was like, I wear those. She said, it's our academy. I was like, I was just there. How did I not see those? But I, we, we didn't even go into, like, the women's shoe section, which is right next to the men's, but anyways, that just goes to show how much shopping I do there, but anyways, yeah, I haven't been back, and we do have to take his boots back, because they ended up, even though he tried them on in the store, they still ended up being just a little bit too big, so he has to go down half a size, and anyway, so we're going to be going back. And I think I might just have to buy some shoes that are in this print. <laughs> it was, I want to buy more of these. <laughs> I do. I want them in all the sizes. <sighs> Bad me. <laughs> Anyways, oh, this is her medium size, which, um, and I don't have it on hand. I wish I could show the difference between her sock or small size project bag and the medium size. It's just, it's a little bit bigger. It's big enough to house a shawl. And um, definitely two, and I have two skeins. <laughs> Sorry, one of my kids toys are going off. I was like, what the crap is scared me? <laughs> no, um, one of their toys is over in the corner. And I don't know if you can hear it, but yeah, it's going off because it's demonic. But anyways, <laughs> um, shut up. <laughs> if you can't hear it, you probably think I've just lost my mind. But I assure you, there is a <laughs> one of my kids' toys, which is 
I guess it's the laptop. One of those leapfrog laptops that just randomly goes off sometimes. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, but I have two skeins of the Malibria Rios in here, and I have plenty of room. Plenty of room. Like I'll open it up and show you. So plenty of room to house two skeins of worsted weight. So definitely do socks, shawl. Anywho, there's her small size bags. You had just enough room to do a skein of sock weight, pretty much, and do socks. But anything bigger than that, I I wouldn't go with. Hmm? Surely you guys can hear that toy. <laughs> Anyways, I have one more whip. I did not work at all on my prowls shawl. I kind of got sidetracked. Um, I promoted our newest colorway this past week. And anyways, I was looking at it next, sitting next to um, the, the previous new colorway of ours for our summer series. And that's red and brilliant yarns. And I was looking at the skeins next to each other and I was like, I'm inspired. So I'm doing a new shawl design. So yay, it's the first time I've done any designing really in a while. <laughs> but I was just looking at them and I was like, hmm, yeah. And another thing I'm doing is worsted weight shawl, which I usually always do fingering. But the way I'm wanting to do the shawl design, which you can... <sighs> So far, anyways, I'm still, it's still in the prog pro progress and, and, um, I might end up changing my mind as I go. I've already changed my mind once while knitting this up. I do that a lot. <laughs> and, um, anyways, so I might change my mind and, but it should be easily adaptable for, for any weight yarn. Like fingering weight, definitely, definitely do over fingering weight. But anyways, the this is what I've got so far, and I know, like, if you are a new viewer, I normally don't go with variegated or crazy speckled yarn for anything but socks. I like them for socks, but. As far as shawls and and most definitely sweaters and stuff like that, I I, I tend to be boring and stick with semi solids. <laughs> um, so this is kind of uh, out of my comfort zone for me, but I was just I was looking at the two colorways, just they were just sitting next to each other in the bin for sale for ready to ship. And I was like, I don't know why, but that just, those two together, I'm getting inspired. I'm thinking of the shawl design, and I was like, okay, I never, ever would have put these two colorways together before. Probably ever, never. But I don't know, I just love them both so much, like, individually, and then together. I, you know, when I first started knitting it and um, putting... And added the, the the pink and orange. I was like, oh, I don't know, but it's just it's grown on me. I like it. It's just colorful. It's so colorful. And anyways, the the yarn, um, it's Blue Lagoon colorway, and this is uh they're both worsted weight, and that's our Victoria base, which is 100% superwash merino, and then the other colorway is beach cocktails see the theme the summer series <laughs> but yeah also on victoria works of the weight and i'm really really liking it so far um i just changed up the stripes so it's it's just it's just having fun with stripes and and garter so Easy peasy knitting, 
um, fast, and you know me, I don't particularly like knitting stockinette flat. <laughs> Save it for the round. <laughs> so I, I love my garter stitch, so anyways, I'm really, really liking it so far. I do have a possible name for the design, but I'm not going to say what it is because I will probably change my mind. I usually do. I usually change my mind on when I have a name in mind. I usually change it probably two or three times by the time I get it up for the pattern up for testing and publishing. So <laughs> I'm not even going to bother saying it because I will more likely change my mind. <laughs> but anyways, I really love it so far and it's very, it's very summery to me. And anyways, you can kind of see some of the speckling because you can see the darker little speckled bits. I just really, really like it. And also, I still have a, I still have a skein each in sock. And I don't know, I think I might do like an individual shawl or something maybe for Christmas. For a Christmas gift. I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. I was going to sneeze. <laughs> as soon as I did that, I was like, I'm not going to sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Gosh, you people probably really do think I'm crazy. <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, there's that. So I'm very excited to get this design going. I just started it yesterday. Um, yesterday evening <laughs> is when I started. So got a lot of work done. I'm already. Let's see. Where am I? Because I'm doing stitch. I'm at 119 stitches already. So, gotten quite a bit done. But with the striping and stuff, it keeps you interested. And worsted weight, it just goes by so fast. <laughs> Anywho. So, that's it as far as knitting. Spinning. I should have brought the fiber out, um, but I didn't. I forgot. <laughs> and you don't see my spinning wheel behind me either, so. Forgot. <laughs> um spinning. I did uh, get my spinning wheel out the other night and I am a little over halfway through the fiber. Um, I decided to not split the bobbins. I am still intending to um, two-ply uh, two it so I'm keeping it all in one bobbin, and I'll do center pull. A center, or apply from a center pull wall from one bobbin. That's the plan, anyways. Or I might try the Navajo or chain plying, which I think is the same thing. Um, I might try that out. I don't know. We'll see. Just, I guess it depends on what I'm in the mood for. The color changes. The, the colors are dark and like purple and blues, so it's not going to be like a huge, it's not going to, the, the color difference is not going to be very noticeable in a two-ply, you know. So, I don't, I, I might just, I, I might just not have a ply, I don't know. I've never done it before. It seems kind of tricky. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And... We'll see. We'll just see when we get there. Um, it is 100% Falkland. It's my first first time spinning Falkland. It's very easy to spin. Um, a lot like BFL. It's just, it practically spins itself. Um, I'm going for a fingering weight. So we'll see. It's 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 spinning up. The singles are spinning up very thin so far. So I think I might be getting a fingering weight this time. Hopefully. Um, let's see, yeah, well that's about it, really, another short episode, <laughs> okay, um, week in review, well, I had another follow-up doctor's appointment, uh, this Monday, this past Monday, and, um, if you're new, I was diagnosed with hyper hyperthyroidism and um, I have not seen my endocrinologist yet 
I go next month. It's the appointment's been scheduled for we're probably about three months <laughs> in advance. So they're usually they're they're just backed up. So, but I go to see them next month at the end of next month. So still kind of waiting for that. Um, my doctor who does not specialize in, in thyroid, she, she says it's tricky and from research that I've done on the internet, apparently it is, and um, hyperthyroidism hyper is more rare than hypo. Hypo is actually pretty common. Um, hyper is not. She says that she you know, so far has seen about two patients a year with hyper, as opposed to hypo, which she sees a lot. <laughs> so, anyways, so she suspects Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disorder. <sighs> so, anyways, it's been interesting. <laughs> I would not wish hyperthyroidism on anyone. Um, if you are familiar with it, then you know. You just, your body just, it's like you can't get a handle over it, you know. It just, like, just seems like it's constantly going back and forth and a whole lot of, a slew of issues. But, anyways. Um, but, so far, she's been having up my dose, for my medicine for the hyperthyroid. She's been having up my dose every month. And yet again, <laughs> she's had a bit again. <laughs> um, my levels were better, have been a lot better than the past couple of times. But there's, she's still upping the dosage a little bit. So, yeah, we'll see. I have been thinking that I've been feeling better. And also, last week, I decided to start... I, I, I was feeling like I was feeling better um, and well enough to get back into exercising again. And um, it's been a long time. And with hyperthyroidism, it's just, it's a real struggle to, like, especially in the beginning before um, when they were just checking my levels and just seeing what was going on before they even prescribing me any medication. I mean, just blow drying my hair wore me out and made me out of breath and it was just awful, you know. Hence why I got my hair cut. I used to have very long hair. <laughs> but last month, I decided to chop it off because, like I said, just blow drying my hair was, was, a, a, was a chore for me. So, Anyways, but last week I was finally getting to where I was feeling better and thought I was well enough to start exercising. So we have an elliptical and so I got my elliptical while my kids were watching, you know, one of their programs and, um, and anyways, it was, whew, last week was a real struggle every every night. Um, each time I got on the elliptical, I tried to, my duration is quite laughable, <laughs> but it's improving. This week especially, it's, I've, I've increased it more, you know, more than double um, what it was last week, but it was just, it was very labored exercise and I struggled a lot with it. Well, I was telling my doctor about it Monday, and um, they did an x-ray on my chest to, to check my lungs because she was wanting to make sure that it wasn't asthma and that the breathing problems were the thyroid because my brother has asthma, so my cousin has asthma. And um, anyway, so I guess that's why she wanted to check. My lungs were fine. So she did give me an inhaler for using um, right before I exercise. So Monday comes along, Monday night comes along, and 
Anyways, I used it right before I got on the elliptical, and I don't know, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced, if any of you have ever experienced it before, but I had, well, first of all, I never used an inhaler ever in my life, <laughs> so I didn't even really, I was like, I just, I just kind of, I didn't really know what to do, they don't even come with instructions, <laughs> I just, you know, and I don't, I don't smoke or anything like that, um, and anyways, so I just kind of remembered what my brother did. He like he would always shake his inhaler and then breathe it in. And I'm like, okay, well I'll just do what he always does with this. And that's what I did. And, and oh my gosh, the coughing was awful after I did that. I was like, oh. But anyways, um, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> nerd. But anyways, so I after my coughing fit, I got on the elliptical. And it was just, it seemed so much easier. Just, like, even my movements just seemed like they had more breath to them, you know. And, um, and I told, and, you know, my mom and my husband both were worried about me, you know, because I'm in Hiller. like, oh my gosh, I'm Hiller, oh, you know. And, um, anyways, they asked how it was, and I was like, I felt like I didn't have to struggle as much from the get-go you know like when I got to towards the end of my stopping time because I'm trying to be very careful because I do not want to have like another torn meniscus scare um like I did a couple of years ago <laughs> um so I've been very careful and just you know knowing my limits and actually not working past them um so I, I was like, you know, I didn't struggle until the end to my limit, but before it was just a struggle from the very beginning. So I just felt like my, just my movements just alone had better breath to them, you know. So anyways, yeah, so that's been good. And this, all of this week, every night so far, and I've continued to increase my time on the ellipt on the elliptical and stuff, um, it's been it's been a lot easier, a lot easier. Um, so, I'm looking forward to to hitting my my goal time because then once I hit my goal time, my plan is to start increasing and adding different exercises. So now I just need to work on eating healthier. <laughs> But, you know, I'd rather do baby steps than, than just go all in because in the past I've always just gone all in and it's just I either stick with it for a good long period and then yo-yo diet basically and I don't want to do that. I don't. I want to do baby steps and just, just get myself gradually into it and make it a lifestyle change. So, anyways. got to get started eating, going more towards the healthy eating route, and get hopefully closer to possibly looking at bathing suits for a beach vacation. <laughs> and oh, that's another thing. My parents are installing a swimming pool. So my mom was like, well, once the swimming pool gets in, Maybe you will want to swim too, you know. And I'm like, can you install it like winter time when I'm planning the beach vacation? And I will hopefully be in a bathing suit then, but right now, no. <laughs> no. Would it well, since it is a will be their own private pool and they live on a, a hundreds of acres. So there's no neighbors in sight. Maybe I'll get in like some shorts and a tank top to get in the pool. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Anyways. And that's another thing that bugs me. My parents are putting in a pool. Did they put in a pool when my brother and I were growing up? When we were at the house and we were young and wanted a pool all the time and wanted to swim all the time? But my, I was, you know, I was asking my mom, I was like, why are you getting a pool? She's like, well, for the grandkids. 
It's like, oh, well, the grandkids get a pool, but us, your own kids, <laughs> didn't. Anyways, whatever. <laughs> They're getting a pool now. And I guess that means that we'll have to go over there <laughs> often. Anywho. I'm not jealous. I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, that's about it as far as we can review. Um, I might... I, I've seen some other podcasters do this. Um, maybe start doing like a health challenge. And put that up in the, in the group thread. So, we'll see. If you're interested in that, let me know. Anywho. Um, TV. What am I watching? Still not really watching much. Um, if I don't exercise when my kids are up and they're watching one of their programs, then and I wait till after they've gone to bed, then I'll get on. I while I exercise, um, I will get on Hulu and uh, pull up Jimmy Fallon, The Tonight Show, and watch that while I'm exercising on an elliptical. I don't know. It just seems like it's good mindless TV to, to do that too. Um, so yeah, I guess I've been kind of watching The Tonight Show a little bit. <laughs> um, and let's see. Oh, and we're watching The Vikings this past season. Um, we've been saving it. Well, we've recorded it and been saving it. We've been, we, we tend like on shows that have the that are shorter seasons, 10 episodes or whatever, however many episodes there are for Vikings, um, we tend to just wait for them for the whole season to be over with and then go back and watch them. So it's been a while, it's actually been over for quite a while, but we finally, um, and we, can, we can't watch it in front of the kids, so it's kind of a slow process. <laughs> but um, I think we're like three episodes in so far. And that's Vikings that comes on the History Channel. With uh, Travis Mill as Ragnar. Hmm? Anywho. But yeah, that's really the only thing I've been watching is Vikings so far. And don't really know what to make of this season so far. It's interesting seeing Rolo not be Viking and being over in France and Perry. Perry. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm interested. I don't know the history. And from what I have read online, um, they've taken quite a bit of liberty with the history here of timelines and all that stuff. So, anyway, I'm kind of wondering what, um, oh, what is her name? Princess Chick that Ragnar cheated on Lagatha with. <laughs> and now who he's stuck with. <laughs> Whatever her name is. I don't know where she, where she's going. What she's trying to where she's going as far as Ragnar is concerned. She seems to be ready to have him off. So, if you've seen it, no spoilers. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, other than that, oh, oh, I should have shown. Since I am watching Vikings currently, I did buy some Viking stitch markers. Oh, quite a, a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but they're not brand new, so it's been a while since I've had them, but yeah. The stitch markers are Viking stitch markers. You can see the little helmet and um, the tree. Anyways, cute. So, yeah. Anyways, this point to show that they were a set. It wasn't just two. Um, seems like there's like six or eight in a set. And that is from, oh, what is it? It's an Etsy shop. Shoot. I don't remember. But I, she does a lot of like TV show themed stitch markers, which, you know, that's right up my alley, TV Nerd Knits. And I have bought the, the Vikings, Supernatural, Once Upon a Time, and... 
Hmm. Okay, wait. The Vikings were in trouble this one time. There's another one. What is it? Can't remember. Anyway. Oh no. Anyways, yeah. So I've, I've I have bought quite a few since as different markers from her. <laughs> They're very cute and snag free, so awesome. There is another TV show that I bought from her, and it's completely escaping me and it's annoying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Crap. Anyways, I was just selling, I was just pr like pretty much pro promoting her shop to someone else the other night because they were asking about it. And I said, What does this just because we're, and I'm just completely drawing a, a blank. Sorry. It's bugging me. <laughs> Sorry. You really do think I'm cray cray. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so yeah, so that's it. Uh, stash enhancement, I have none other than the project bag. I got a shut off earlier. And podcast news. Um, on the TV Nerd Nets group page, we are still writing the 2016 stash bust. Uh, go on there, check it out. There's a few rules, like you have to be a member to qualify for a prize. Um, your stash had to have been added by a certain time. So just go in there, check out the little rules, and participate. I encourage you to knit up some stash. Um, we are about to, it, the prizes are drawn quarterly. And it's about the end of the second quarter. Uh, the end of this month will be the end of the second quarter, and we'll drop our prize then. And there's been a few added in the last week or so. Um, it was kind of quiet for a while there, but the last week or so, it's picked back up. So, anyhow, so check that out. Oh, and um, also, Gabrielle Nitz. Uh, she's the designer that designed a new shawl pattern out of our fingering base yarn, which is Chant de Mars um, in the Storm Clouds colorway. Um, she just released the pattern. Yay! Um, last weekend. Fairly recently. Uh, very recently. She just released the pattern. She was running a cell, um it was, you could get the pattern free by signing up for her newsletter, but I think it was for that weekend only. I am not sure, but let me bring it up on my phone and I can show it off. Um, the pattern is called Rainy Night Shawl. Do, 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 do. I should have done this and that way it would have been ready. Rainy night shawl. Oh, she is running, she's currently running a sale. It's a launch sale. It's get 20% off rainy night shawl until July 3rd. Um, that the, the pattern is for $4.99, so you can get 20% off. It doesn't look like you need a coupon code. Um, here is the picture. Pull it up. Okay. And that is the shawl. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, I am planning on doing a knit along for it. Uh, this evening I'm going to finish figuring out the plans and prizes for the knit along get with Gabrielle and ask if she if there's a particular way she wants to do it and um, and then probably probably have it set up by the end of the night and have it ready to go tomorrow Saturday which is what is it, Saturday what is the day say so the 25th and that will work with her 20% off coupon. So, anyways, definitely check it out. I've already got the pattern. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it, so I just looked at it to make sure that it opened 
the PDF open and everything. So other than that, I haven't looked at the pattern yet, but the shawl, her pictures look very, very pretty. Um, I will be joining in with the knit along. Um, I haven't decided on what colorway yet. Uh, I think I would probably do Sangria, which is our red colorway. And probably knit this shawl as a Christmas gift for my sister-in-law. So, she really likes red. Her name's Rosemary, so red, roses, you know. Um, so, yeah, kind of goes. <laughs> and anyway, so I'll probably do that as a Christmas gift for her. So, yay! Another Christmas gift lined up. I was going to finish my husband's socks. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, definitely get prepared for that if you're interested. I'm um, really excited to get that note along going. I think what I'm going to do for one of the prizes is donate a skein of yarn. So, maybe from a stash, maybe from the shop. I don't know yet. Um, but I do know I have plenty of stash that I'll probably knit with, so I could probably pull from my stash with that. <laughs> Anywho, but I'm thinking about maybe doing a skein of our yarn from the shop since the pattern was written in our yarn. So, anyway, so that's very exciting. So look forward to that. Um, we are 46 and a half minutes in. So on that note, I will sign off. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. Stay cool. It's so hot. Um very humid here, especially yesterday, but it seems to not, the humidity doesn't seem to be so bad today since it kind of rained a little bit last night. So, anyways, but like I said, stay cool, um, try to stay out, or try to stay indoors, especially during the hottest period of time from 11 to 2. You're a woman, you should know. <laughs> Same sunscreen, wear the sunscreen, don't get skin cancer, don't go tanning. <laughs> Obtaining beds, anyways. <laughs> anyways, stay cool, be safe, have a lovely weekend, have fun knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye.